and now you realize you've gone three hours of working and you haven't had breakfast you haven't had lunch you didn't remember to drink any water because you just don't have any time and you want to go to the bathroom but you just can't take a break right now because it's not scheduled in please don't do that <laughs> in this video i'll go through my top five mistakes for time blocking or calendar blocking and how you can avoid them if you are making these mistakes or if you want to try time blocking or calendar blocking but you don't want to make these mistakes this is the video for you Hi, I'm Kimani and welcome to my channel Haul In This Together where we talk about all things self-growth, productivity and organization. So if that's something that's up your alley then you might want to subscribe to this channel because we post videos every single week related to one of these three topics. So let's get right into the video. Okay, this is probably the most annoying, most stressful and just that mistake that Others will try time blocking and be like, okay, this is not me because they made this mistake. This mistake is not having flexibility and so you feel stuck in the schedule that you've created in the time blocks that you have made. Please don't do this. Sometimes when we're trying to calendar block, we'll decide that, okay, we want to be our most productive in those hours that we're blocking away. And so we have a calendar that looks something like this. If your calendar looks like that, please please throw it away and start over. We don't need this. This is chaos. We need something that's more like this. Something where we have time in between, in between each task, before each task, after each task, and we can move things around if we need to. Sometimes we may plan our day or a week or whatever it is, and life just doesn't go the way that we have planned and so we need to have wiggle room we need to have some form of flexibility so that if something happens you get a call that oh the bus didn't pick your daughter up from school whatever it is or your son is running late for practice whatever it is that you need to do you know that you can move something up or move something down or you can completely disregard a task or something that you have time blocked before because something more important or something higher priority has come up and you don't feel so boxed in it where you're like okay i have my next 10 hours planned out and and there is literally no room for you to do anything else and now you realize you've gone three hours of working and you haven't had breakfast you haven't had lunch you didn't remember to drink any water because you just don't have any time and you want to go to the bathroom but you just can't take a break right now because it's not scheduled in please don't do that <laughs> I'm asking you nicely. Don't do that to yourself because we're not robots. We're humans and we need to leave space for human stuff like using the bathroom and eating and just resting so that we can reset for the next task. You know, so don't do that. That's the number one mistake that a lot of people make. And so if you haven't started time blocking, then please don't do that. If you have started time blocking and you are doing that, then you just need to rearrange some stuff and leave some wiggle room in between. Leave at least an hour in between each task if you can, or at least each big task if you can. If not, then have at least 15 minutes unless each tasks are related. And so you want to do like three things at once and then take like a longer break, but ensure that there is some wiggle room for you to move things around if you need to. Okay, this is another one that's very popular and kind of overseen a lot. And that is you're not being specific enough with the time that you are blocking away. So you blocking away five hours to say, I want to be productive. Like, miss, what, what, does, what does that mean? Being productive for you and being productive for me means something different every single day or every single week, depending on what's going on. So just put in something to say, do work, be productive, clean. <laughs> Whatever it is, like you need to be a lot more specific so that you know that when the time comes and you get that alert to say you need to do this specific thing in the next five hours, in the next five minutes, four or five hours, whatever it is, you know that these are the specific things that you need to get done in that time. Now, 
I don't just use my calendar blocking for this. I will block away time for client work or my work or whatever it is I need to do. But I also supplement that with a to-do list so that I can be a lot more specific with the individual things that I need to do within that time period in my to-do list. So if you want to watch that video on how I plan my week using my to-do list and my calendar blocking, then you can check that video out right here. So my fix for this on how to avoid it is if you're going to have broader time blocks in your calendar then ensure that you have a to-do list or something else to have like notes on what exactly you need to do in that time or if you don't want to have your to-do list along with your calendar blocking and you just want to have your calendar blocking if you're using google calendar and a few other calendars they do have like an, a description option where you can add details of what you need to do in that time and that will help a lot if not just ensure that your heading is a lot clearer than just saying be productive the third mistake that i see a lot is that there isn't ample time for the task that you want to complete and to be honest it can be either way you can have too much time blocked away for a specific task that you literally don't need that much time for or it can be a case where you don't have enough time and then you have to go into the time that you have blocked away for something else and it just throws your entire day off what i do every time i'm going to do a time block i think back to some other time when i did something similar or i did this exact thing so if you've done this thing before and it's something that you do quite often you kind of have an idea in your head of how long it usually takes if not and you've never done it before and this is your first time doing a task like this then you can think back to something that's similar to that and kind of get like an estimate of what it is that you're doing but if you're doing this for the first time then definitely leave a lot more wiggle room than just 10-15 minutes in between just in case it actually goes a lot longer than you thought it would now the good thing about this is that for me personally i prefer when i overestimate something than underestimate it because when i underestimate it it definitely will throw my day off especially if i'm having like a really busy day however if i overestimate something then i actually completed it in less time than i thought and i can use that time to either prepare for the next thing i have to do to rest and reset for the next thing i have to do or i can move up that next thing that i have to do up in my day so i end up having a shorter day than what i had planned originally so in that case it's like a double win so definitely think about how much time you're giving to each task and think about how long you think it will take or just overestimating it by like 15 30 minutes whatever it is that you think you need to overestimate by just in case you need that extra time to get something done another thing that i do to help me to avoid this is that i track my time i do a self audit quite frequently and this is something that i mentioned in a video that i did some weeks ago on my top 10 tips for time management and so if you want to check that video out to get the details on this tip that i'm going to give you or just to check out my other tips on time management so that you can see which ones you want to implement you can just click that video right there in the top right hand corner and it will take you directly to that video but this is tracking my time using a software an app called toggle track now this app literally tracks everything once you input your your data and it keeps that data and sends your report at the end of the week whatever it is you can go back to look at things that specific task or just how long you are productive in each day whatever it is you need to search for it helps you to know exactly how long it took for you to get specific things done so that you can replicate that when you are adding them to your time blocking calendar and for me this is great because sometimes i might think okay something is going to take me 15 minutes and when i look it took me an hour or the opposite is also true where i'll feel like i'm working on something for the past three hours and when i check my toggle that's always tracking everything i'm doing it will say okay you've just been at this for 15 minutes it just feels long because you're probably not enjoying what you're doing or whatever it is and so it's important for me to have that physical data to look at to be like okay this is what i was working on and this is how long it took and i have like the past five times i've done it and so i can find like the middle ground or the average time that i know that it will take me to get that done this fourth one might seem a little bit contradictory based on like the things that i do do for myself 
but let me explain so the fourth one is that you've calendar blocked for weeks in advance and so you feel stuck you feel that there's no room for anything or you get bored because you're stuck in the same cycle of every week looks the same whatever it is but these things can cause you to not want to calendar block anymore because it might seem like it's not working but you just need to fix these things these mistakes that you may be making so when i created my time block and i showed you guys on that video where i showed you all things time block you can watch it by clicking that i card or you can wait until the end of the video where i will have a playlist of all my productivity and organizational videos so that you can just binge watch those if this is something that you're interested in but in that video i did create an ideal week calendar that i have just filled out automatically every single week going forward and with that you might be saying, but Kimani, this is what you do. The difference that I do with that is that I ensure that there's room in between each task for wiggling around and just flexibility so I can move things around if I need to, or I can completely disregard something, but it's more so of a template instead of a strict, this is what you need to do kind of situation. So you can do that as well so that it's easy for you to plan your week ahead but you can also go through each day and change your own things based on what's happening right now in your life the fifth one is one that is often overlooked because you might say okay i'm doing calendar blocking and so it's a productivity tool which means that i just need to plan my work life and then there is no balance for your life life there is no enjoyment there is no breaks there is no rest there's nothing like that that's incorporated in your plan for your week and so you just feel like all you're doing is working and so this final mistake is that there is no balance for your work and your life and so what i would suggest is that you put in other things that are just like rec recreational so whether that's hobbies or just going on a date whatever it is ensure that these things are planned within your week so that you do have a balance between work and actually enjoying your life or if that means scheduling your lunch breaks or just breaks in between each big task that you have throughout the day whatever makes sense to you ensure that you are having some form of balance between your work and your actual life okay so those are my top five mistakes that people make and I've made myself when doing calendar blocking. If you've done any of these things or you want to avoid any of these things and there was any mistake that actually spoke to you directly, then let me know down below in the comment section because I would love to hear your thoughts. So that's it for this video. I'll see you guys next week with another video. Please check out the playlist with all my organization and productivity videos. Until then, please do something today that will help you to be a little bit better than you were yesterday.